Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here once again at Calvin Air Engines with Kevin Frischi who's going to show us how to assemble the pistons that are going to be going into the Fairmont engine. And these pistons are a little bit different so maybe we can take the opportunity to talk about you know the differences with the pins that we're using here as opposed to some of the other ones that are pressed in and okay. how to put a piston together. So the connecting rod we have here, this is your H-beam, uh, H sorry. Um, full floating so we got a bushing in the end here. It has the uh, ARP 8740 rod bolts. The uh, Just because this was new doesn't mean we didn't check it. We checked the big end for size. We checked the pin bushing for size. We only had four tenths of a thousandths clearance on the pin bushing, which might be a little snug on a turbo application. So we opened that up, three more tenths, so we got seven tenths of a thousandths clearance on our pin bushing. Like I said, this it, it, is called full floating, so the connecting rod is not locked onto the pin. So in, in those applications where the, the pin is actually locked onto the connecting rod, there's a whole different process than you just sliding it in there like that, isn't there? Correct. It's usually a thousandths and a half press fit. So we'd have to use heat to heat the big end, the small end of the rod up, and then while, before it cools, we need to slide that pin in there. and then, While it's inside the piston. While it's in the piston, and then let it cool. So well, I like the full floating, uh, especially on applications such as this. If we'd end up with, say, an abnormal combustion situation where the piston would be subjected to extreme heat and it would grow rapidly, say that pin, piston would grab a hold of this pin, well then, if we had a press fit application, everything's tied up. I, nothing's going to move. So here, since this is full floating, if we would have that happen, if that piston would grab a hold of that pin, it still pivots. So it would lessen, lessen uh, some engine damage. So it might it might save the engine. It's bad enough to have a, a situation where you have say say we uh, didn't have enough uh, boost retard. Mm -hmm. and, and ran into a detonation situation that uh, could lessen the, the damage overall on the, on the job. So on your connecting rod, if you'll notice, we have a small chamfer right there at the outer edge. This here we have a large chamfer. So that large chamfer has to go against basically the cheek of the crankshaft. So when this is in the engine, we got a large chamfer here. This would be the front ones and say this is a cylinder number five, so that's going to go to the back. So that's how you know which way these are going to go in the engine. And also, as you're standing there looking at it, it's cylinder number one. So we've got our chamfer to the front, we've got our valve notches up at the top. And then of course we have the, the slight dish for the boost application. Yeah, we want a lower compression because if we had high compression with boost, that could, uh, that could give you that extreme heat situation you spoke of, correct? Exactly. And then we get in, since this is a longer rod, 5 inch 400, we had to move the piston pin bore up into the piston. So then that needs to use a, uh, a spacer ring and that'll go in first and that'll support basically an oil ring support rail is what I believe they call it. Because if not, this is just a big area as this piston is moving up and down and, the, and those oil rings are really thin, they're kind of flexible. Yes. Now this piston comes with uh, spiral locks. There's uh, two spiral locks per side. To install a spiral lock, you actually do spread it out just a little bit, and then you roll it into the groove. I like to use a little pocket screwdriver. That's a high-tech tool you got there, Kevin. Yes. You need to hope your local parts store at Christmas time is handing these out. <laughs> or a tool person. Yes. In fact, I often, re I often refer to it as my 11th finger. And on the other side, you do the same thing. Is there a groove yes. or something in there that there those fit a, into? Yes, there is a groove in the piston. So just flattening those out causes them to expand enough to wedge themselves into there? Yeah. And I used to hate these. But then they come out with just round wire circlips, and those are even worse. So that makes these seem pretty nice. <laughs> it's probably one of them jobs where you probably ought to wear safety glasses in case one takes off and doesn't get you in the eye. Now on this spacer, notice it has a little dimple right there. That dimple has to go in between here. That's going to keep this ring from moving around where it shouldn't be. You know, I was almost going to ask that just because with that split there, because you have to open it up to get it around the piston, if that part of the ring actually got into that area, if 
there could be a yeah. problem. So you just yeah. address so that. So it's not going to yeah. spin because of that dimple. We'll install that first. There it is. It's not going anywhere. And it's always interesting to put piston rings on just without damaging the surface. And I see you're, you've got a certain technique that you've got, you're using there. People have different theories, different techniques. Um, you know, I put that gap on the oil ring spacer on this side because on a V-style engine, you got your minor and major thrust areas. This should be major thrust on this bank and this major thrust on this bank. So that gap would be over here. And I actually, I don't know if it makes a difference, but I sure feel better knowing that I don't have that gap on a, on a major thrust side. And then when I go to put the oil uh, rails on, I got, this is the expander. It's a three piece oil ring. I put the top one on first. Make sure you can still see the two colors so you don't have the ends overlapped. And then since we have the top one on, it makes it a lot easier to put the other one on. And I don't get too excited about having my gaps on opposite sides on the oil ring. We've got them split. There's the middle, there's the top one, there's the bottom one. So they are split. Now the second one, it says top over here. So that's going to go up. And these rings being sixteenth of an inch thick, they're thin enough. I'm not going to get carried away with ring pliers. I've broken more rings with ring pliers than without. A little too much leverage, you think? I, could be me. But uh, You're just a man. So I lined them up. You know, I didn't turn the piston around. They are lined up right now. It's not going to install that way. I'll go ahead and spin the ring around, leave the second one there, bring the top one back around. And the reason I like to do that is I now guarantee that these rings rotate freely. If the ring does not rotate freely on the piston, you've got a nick, a burr, or something somewhere that needs addressed at this time. Because if that ring isn't allowed to move, it's not going to seal in the bore. But okay. wait, there's more. On some applications, the rod bearings will actually say upper and lower. This one does not. I double checked. But uh, if you notice, once we put this bearing in there it does not hang over the wide chamfer so that bearing this aftermarket 4340 crank has a larger radius right here so we need to narrower bearing so that bearing misses that radius i remember we had to get those special because uh, the original bearings that we got were a bit wide yes they were so that's one challenge you might want to note when watching this video trial assembly and planning ahead is very important oh absolutely well there you have it kids assembly and a little bit about pistons. Uh, how to install the rings, how to install the bearings, a little bit about floating pistons, and what are the other type of Preston type? Is that just Yeah, press the word fit and full press, floating. Press and we raise and full floating. Okay. Anyhow, we also did a video about uh, setting the ring gap that I'll link in the description. In addition to that link, I will put a link to Calvinator Engines so you can see more about Kevin here, who is Master Yoda when it comes to building engines. Uh, if you have automotive questions, there'll be a link to airatthecarguy.com where you can go in to get answers to those automotive questions. Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you wish to connect with me socially, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.